Good morning, guys. Today we're going to start our first lesson in statistics. Uh, this one's really just kind of gets familiar with a little bit of vocabulary we're going to use throughout the year. Um, but that's why it's called one point intro. So it's a little introductory section. Uh, first, I want to talk about data analysis. Data analysis is kind of a big theme for what we're going to do most of this course throughout the year. Uh, data analysis sounds scary. Really, it's just taking a set of data and then and data just means a collection of information. Uh, we're going to organize it. We're going to summarize it. Uh, we're going to visualize it. And we're going to ask questions about it. So organizing it can be things like uh, just cleaning it up, grouping like things together, um, similar like that. Um, summarizing it might mean uh, taking a bunch of numbers and using one number to describe the whole group, some summary statistics. Uh, visualizing might be organizing it in a graph or some a table, something like that. And then the big thing, once we have all of this stuff organized, analyzed, uh, summarized, visualized, once we've all done all that, we should be able to answer some questions about those individuals from whom we collected that data, or maybe even some greater set. All right, so a uh, couple of things we're coming up this year. Individual and variable, we're gonna use these almost daily, so make sure we have those straight. Um, individual is whom we are learning about. So the individuals about, um, the, the data that we collected. Okay, so it's those people that we collected data about or information about. So that's the individual. The variable is the what. So it's what we learned about the individuals. All right, so when we get a new data set, kind of thinking in terms of individuals and variables, four things that we want to kind of get into our mind really early on in the process. First thing is who or what are the individuals? And the reason I said who or what, because usually if we're talking about people or things like that, we could have individuals that way. That'd be a who. But what is like, a, say we're talking about inanimate objects or maybe dogs or cats or something like that. There are lots of things that we can gather information about but aren't necessarily people. I can gather information about, you know, bags of M&Ms and things like that. So that'd be a what are the individuals. Next important thing is how many of them are there? So how many individuals are there? Very important to know that that sample size, as we'll get to where we call it, um, because it's going to dictate a lot of the um, conclusions that we can draw and kind of the strength of some of those conclusions based on that sample size. Uh, once we know who the individuals are, how many individuals we have, the next thing we need to know is um, what are the variables. And what information did we gather about these individuals? And very important, um, what are the units of measure? So what are the variables measured in? What are the variables measured in? So we're talking units. And that's very, very important because if I know what they're measured in, it may give me an idea of what type of variable it is. So that kind of gets into the next thing, types of variables. Now there's more than just two types of variables, but all variables for what we're working with can be kind of broken into these two. And they kind of have subcategories from there. We may talk about them later. So types of categories, uh, types of variables be like categorical or quantitative. Now, some people will say qualitative instead of categorical. It means the same thing. I'll use those kind of interchangeably sometimes. So I like to first talk quantitative. That one to me has, makes a little more sense. Quantitative, that sounds like quantity. So quantity is how much of something, right? So that's numerical, that's numbers. So quantitative, a quantitative variable is a numerical value or numerical information. And that's what we're talking about, data. 
And it's not any numerical information, it's a specific subset of numerical information. It's numerical information that was measured, okay? Numerical information that was measured or counted. By quantity, how much of something is there, okay? And it needs to make sense on a number line Makes sense on a number line, like we're putting it makes sense to put those things in order to rank them, or as an average. So let's think of some numbers, some things that we can measure or count and be able to kind of make sense of them by putting them in order for different individuals, ranking them, or averaging them all together. Uh, so maybe something like height, right? It makes sense to collect a bunch of heights and put people in order for other heights, like on a number line, or to average their heights together, get an average height for the group. So height would be a good example, something that's measured. Um, maybe anything related to time, right? Time can be put on a number line. Time can be averaged. Um, what about weight, uh, speed? You know, any of those types of things. Um, what if I was talking about the number of M&Ms in a bag, in a pouch of M&Ms? Would that be quantitative? Is that something that's counted or measured? Yeah, I would count how many M&Ms are. It makes sense because if this one has 55 pieces and this one has 56 pieces and that one has 57 pieces, it makes sense to put them in a certain order on a number line based on how many pieces of M&Ms they have. So really items that are counted a number of counted items would be another quantitative variable. So number of counted items. So those are all good examples of quantitative variables. Things that we're going to measure or count. Things that we're going to put on the number line. Things that we're going to average. Now we have other pieces of numeric information that may not necessarily be quantitative. For example, your area code. Your area code's not measured, right? It's just three numbers that they use to say that you live in this certain area. It's not measured. It doesn't make sense to put them on number lines. People that have a smaller area code aren't necessarily any worse or any better or any lower ranked or higher ranked than someone with a larger area code. So area code would be something that doesn't really make sense as quantitative data. So that information that's not measured, that's not counted, that isn't gonna be average, that's what we call categorical data. So categorical data, I like to just think of as non-measured characteristics. Let's move you on down here. Non-measured characteristics. So things like, uh, like we were just saying, your area code. We don't measure that. Uh, what's something else that you don't measure that might be quantitative? Um, Maybe your, I don't know, social security number, that's not measured. I guess at one point it probably put people in the order they were born, but those numbers are all over the place now, so I don't think there's really, it doesn't make sense to get an average social security number, that type of thing. Um, but it doesn't have to be quantitative. There are other characteristics that are not measured. Let's go back to the M&Ms. What are some other characteristics other than how many M&Ms? Maybe what color of M&Ms? maybe what flavor of M&Ms. Those are all characteristics that we don't measure. Uh, maybe things talking about people, maybe something like race. That's a characteristic that's not measured. Gender, uh, eye color, right? These are all what we would consider categorical or qualitative variables. We're not measuring them. You're not gonna put these on a number line. They don't make sense on a number line. So we might have to use a different type of graph other than something using a number line, maybe like a pie chart or something along those lines. All right. So those are our types of variables that we're gonna focus on. Get comfortable with those because the type of variable is really gonna dictate what type of summarizing, what type of organizing, what type of visualizing. So we need to be able to identify what those types of variables are. All right, so I've got a data set over here. It's on the back of your note sheet right there. So I've got a data set that we're gonna look at and we're gonna to try to put some of this vocab to use over there. 
So guys, as you can see, I've got uh, ten, so a bunch of information from 10 randomly selected people from an online cake decorating course. So on this course, they registered and they gathered a bunch of information. So you can see all these different things we've learned. So using this data set, let's kind of talk, talk about individuals, talk about variables, talk about categorical and quantitative. Yeah. So back to our first example right here, who are the individuals? So in our online cake decorating class, who would we say the individuals are? So I want to see if y'all can take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can identify who the individuals are and uh, what are the variables. And I'll wait right here. All right, hopefully you've had time to work through that, so let's talk. Individuals. Remember, individuals, as we talk about, were um, who we are learning about, who are we gathering information about. So in this, who did we gather information about? We gathered information about the online cake decorating students. And it was really the 10 online cake decorating students. So we'll be specific. All right, so what are the variables? So what are the pieces of information that we gathered about them? Well, you really, you can see that in the data set. It's really just the headings for each of those. So our variables would be things like what state you live in. Okay? It'd be things like your number of family members. Uh, what else did we learn about them? Age, gender. Marital status, annual income. These are all the pieces of information that we have gathered and learned about these 10 online cake decorating students. All right, so now that we know what the variables are, who we're learning about, let's step over there and let's see uh, if we can identify whether categorical or quantitative. All right, so I want you guys to, again, I'm pause the video right here. Uh, and. You can kind of label it here, you can label it on your sheet, however you want to do it. I just want you to put like a C next to um, categorical and a Q next to quantitative uh, and see if we can identify what each of these types of variables would be. And I'll pause right here and give you a second to do that. All right, so let's get on. So let's use our uh, blue marker for our categorical variables. So as we're going through categorical, remember things that you're not going to measure. So if I'm looking at my categorical variables, something like state. State would be categorical. I'm not going to get an average state. I'm not going to list the states on a number line. So I feel like state would definitely be a categorical. Uh, number of family members. Well, I feel like number of family members, I can probably put that on a number line, right? I can rank somebody that's got more family members or less than another. Average number of family members, that probably makes sense. So I feel like number of family members would be quantitative. It's a measurement or a count. What about age in years? Again, average age, ranking uh, individuals on a number line by age, I think that's another quantitative. Uh, gender, well, we already talked about gender. Gender's over there in our list of good categorical variables. What about marital status? Do you think marital status would be categorical or quantitative. Well, we're not measuring it, we're not counting it, we're really just classifying individuals based on their marital status. So I think that's a good categorical variable. And then what about annual income? Does it make sense to get an average annual income for the group? Does it make sense to rank people on a number line based on an annual income? Yeah, I think it does. So I think annual income is definitely a quantitative variable right there. So. Looking at those, we can see what's categorical, what's quantitative, and now I've got kind of an idea of how to be able to go about graphing them and organizing and visualizing them, essentially. All right, so a couple other things I want to talk about using uh, this data set, but as you can see what we've got right here, we've got something called a distribution. So distribution, again, another word we're going to use almost daily, so make sure you kind of get this into your mind. Because you're going to be looking at it like, what's a distribution? Well, the, we're talking about it now, we're going to talk about it every day, so make sure you go ahead and memorize that or uh, whatever you need to do, but you need to know what this means. Distribution, it sounds like distribute, right? So it sounds like how things are spread out. You'll talk about that in your algebra courses. You 
distribute, you kind of take a number and apply it to all the other values that's attached to you. So that's the same idea. It's how are things allocated is what a distribution is. So a distribution, all it does is tell me what are the variables or what are the values of a variable. So what are the values of a variable and how often does each value occur? That how often it occurs, that actually has a special name. This is called the frequency. How often a certain value occurs, the frequency. So let's go through and you got two of them here. We got states, right? We have lots of different values of the states. Kentucky is a value, Michigan's a value, Virginia's a value. And then each one of those values is going to occur a certain number of times. Okay? And then we've got uh, like number of family members. It's another one where you have a certain number of values that it can take on. What I want you to do is I want you to write the distribution for the state and the number of family members. And we'll pause right here. But I want you to tell me what values uh, each person could have put for state, what values each person could have put for number of family members, and how many of each one they had. And I'll wait right here. I guess I can move it to the side so you can see that. All right, let's see what you guys came up with. So over here in state, <clears throat> so state, what all did we have as an option? Uh, we have Kentucky, we have Florida, we have Wisconsin, California, Michigan, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York. Those are the possible values we could take on or values a specific outcome of a variable. Now, how often did each one occur? So what were their frequencies? All right, so let's look. Kentucky, Kentucky occurred only one time. So its frequency was one. Florida, one time. Uh, Wisconsin, just one time. California, one, two times. Michigan, Michigan, just one time. Virginia was two times. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania was once. And I feel like New York was once, right? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten. Yep, that's our ten individuals. So this is our distribution of state and how often each one. So the values that each person could put for state and how often each one occurred. I must call it number of family members. So what are the possible values for number of family members? Well, the smallest one was two and the largest number outcome was six. So I'm gonna do two, three, four, five, six. Now you're probably sitting there saying, well, why would you do five? Nobody put a five. Well, what do we talk about? Uh, number of family members was a quantitative value. Why do we like quantitative? Because it makes sense to organize on a number line. So if we're putting these in order, which it makes sense to rank them in order, let's go ahead and account for everything from start to finish. Do you have to do this all the time? No, but let's go ahead and get in the habit of doing it. So let's rank them from start to finish, and then we can put if something occurs or does. So if we go through, how many people said they had two family members? Only one person. How many people said they had three family members? Only two people. How many people said they had four family members? There were four people. How many people said they had five family members? Nobody did. And how many people said they had six family members? Just one. So we can see that we have our number of family members and then we can see the frequencies for each one. So because it's quantitative data, it makes sense to put it in order and it makes sense to even put something that doesn't appear so we can kind of see there's a little gap, there's a little jump right there, maybe an extreme value, something like that, which we'll talk about later. All right, last thing I want to talk about in this introduction, uh, let's go ahead and squeeze over here, is inference. Inference is something that you guys probably have talked about in different classes before, um, but really inference is nothing more than just drawing conclusions. 
Right, so we're just going to draw conclusions. based on observations from the data. So we're going to look at our data and then we're going to just draw conclusions. What have we learned about uh, whomever? Now, now how far can we draw those conclusions? That We're going to get into that stuff much later. Uh, can we talk about just the people in the study? Can we generalize it to all the people in the community or maybe all the people uh, in the world? Who knows? You know, that all depends on how we go about getting those individuals and getting that data. But the idea behind it is I'm going to look at a large set of data and I'm going to draw conclusions. I'm going to kind of come up with a summary judgment on it. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to make an inference. Draw a conclusion about these individuals as it fits to marital status. Now, because these were randomly selected individuals, we can actually talk about the whole group of online cake decorating students for this specific course. Um, so I want you to talk about that whole group. What do we think is going on with their marital status uh, based on what we see in this sample of 10 students? So um, I'll give you a second. Again, it's on your sheet, but I'll rotate this over if you want to see the marital status. So, you take uh, just take a minute. You guys read through and uh, come up with an inferential inferential statement. I'll wait right here. All right. Hopefully, you've had time to kind of do a little analysis and inspection. So, if we look at these, what do we notice about the marital status? Well, we notice that out of this group, seven out of the ten were married one was divorced and sorry two were divorced and those were no were uh was single so i think the statement i could probably make a pretty good conclusion that um students in this uh cake decorating course are more likely to be married than not. I think that's a pretty good solid conclusion we can draw because 70% of our sample was married and if we feel like our sample is representative of our whole population then we feel like something similar would be going on in the population. Now do we feel like it's exactly 70% of the population? No that's not reasonable but um, we'll talk later about how to get an estimate of what's going on in a population from the sample. Right now we're just trying to see kind of trends and patterns. That's that last little part about uh, data analysis, answering questions about the individuals based on the data. All right, so that's it for kind of our introductory little lesson here on data analysis on what is statistics. And uh, these are very important vocab words that you need to get in your mind because again, we're going to use them daily in this course. Uh, that's it, and I'll see you in class tomorrow, guys.